A while back I made this video which was all about why you should not buy Miami real estate. Probably a ton of real estate agents here in Miami are probably going to hate me, but I don't care because my loyalty is with you. But was I wrong? Well, in this video, we're going to explore that a little bit and go over some potential reasons why I might have been wrong and also maybe some reasons why I'm actually still right. So let's see. So every month, the Miami Association of Realtors, which is our MLS association that we belong to in order to get access to all of the MLS tools and be a part of the Realtor Board, they send out a report once a month about how the local market's doing, all the different sales data, and things like that. And that's what inspired me to make this video because there's some interesting numbers I wanna go over with you guys here today. A lot of these numbers are gonna be year over year numbers. And we're gonna start with Miami-Dade County single family homes. So in December 2019, there was 1,174 closed sales. But in December 2020, there was 1,372. That's almost a 17% increase. And the median price, get this guys, went from $380,000 to $454,000. That's a huge jump in the median price point in just one year. So let's think about this for a second. If you were to buy that same house a year ago, there's a good chance you could have collected about $70,000 worth of appreciation on a home in one year. Not bad, right? Well, let's not forget that a lot of the reasons I mentioned in that video pointed to a lot of other factors besides just price appreciation, such as sea level water rise, the current state of the economy, and what was happening with the whole illness and all of the money printing that's going on. And so here's what I think that's happening. I'll get into some more statistics in just a minute, but let me just give you a bird's eye view from what I see here as a Miami real estate agent. What I see happening is a few different things. In, in a way, it's kind of a perfect storm. So there's a mass migration to Florida, which I've talked about in many of my other videos you guys are aware of. So there's a lot of people moving here in general. And that was happening before all of the illness stuff started. But now that the illness has been in full effect now for almost a year, it's driving even more people to Florida than ever before because a lot of other states have very strict lockdowns and obviously here in Florida, we're very open as far as restaurants and businesses go. A lot of places, there's no more social distancing and you only have to wear the mask in certain places. And in general, it's a very open state compared to many others. So that is bringing a lot of people into the state of Florida on top of the ones who were already gonna come here anyways. So that fuels a lot of extra buying activity that we might not have normally had if none of this actually happened. And so when I made that video about Miami real estate, we were already a couple months into the pandemic, but we weren't as far into it as we are now to see more of the effects of migration patterns and what's gonna end up happening long term. So that's one issue I wanna point out. Another issue is that since we do have a lot of people moving from all these other states, mainly like New York, New Jersey, Illinois, and California, those places are very expensive. And a lot of the major cities in those states are even more expensive than Miami in general. So it still makes Miami look like a very good deal, basically a bargain to people coming from these extremely expensive areas. They're not afraid to pay these all time high when it comes to prices here, because for them it's still cheap, right? But when you look at Miami as a whole, and the real estate market here and how things have been over the past 10, 12 years, these prices that we're seeing now are record highs, essentially. You know, we had record high prices back in the 2008 market crash right before things came tumbling down. And now, in a lot of cases, we've already exceeded those previous highs. Miami real estate has never been worth more than it's worth right now. People that come here from other places, a lot of them don't know or they just don't care and they buy anyways. But that doesn't tell the whole story because there's no way to know how many of those people are actually gonna stay, 
How many of them are gonna end up renting their place out instead of living in it? How much more inventory is gonna come on the market, etc. If you guys are enjoying this video, make sure you drop it a like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. The goal of the channel is to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. And with your help and you guys watching these videos and hitting that like button and subscribing, it's definitely going to get us a lot closer. Another important factor to keep in mind is all of these numbers compiled by the Miami Association of Realtors are all averages across all of Miami-Dade County. So what that means is it includes all different types of neighborhoods. We're talking ghetto neighborhoods, middle-class neighborhoods, and ultra-luxury neighborhoods. So it's kind of hard to gauge what's really happening based on only these numbers because in my opinion, Real estate is hyper local. Even though Miami is known as one big city, the actual markets here can change and be totally different depending on the area, right? And I'm sure a lot of the appreciation that we're seeing in these numbers is coming from really nice and fancy areas like Miami Beach and Coral Gables and Pinecrest and South Miami and Miami Shores and places like that that tend to always increase in value pretty much no matter what. And yeah, of course, if you're gonna throw those in the bucket with the other ones that maybe aren't as desirable as far as the neighborhoods go, then things are always gonna look rosier than they really are, right? Are things moving in the right direction appreciation-wise? Yes, but is it a little bit artificial and due to the current world circumstances? I would also say yes. And how much longer can this last for? Well, that's anyone's guess. And that's pretty much the message that I wanted to convey in this video. So let's jump into the condo sales here real quick. In December 2019, there was 1,250 closed sales of condos. And in December 2020, there was 1,618, which was a 29% increase. The median sales price in December 2019 was 245,000. In December 2020, it was 274,000. So a lot like I said in one of my last videos about living in a house, the condos don't nearly appreciate as much as houses do. That's pretty much the rule of thumb. That's pretty normal. So you're not gonna see as massive of appreciation, right? So what does this tell us? The prices in Miami are moving in an upward direction still. They were moving in a downward direction towards the beginning of the whole illness. And then things started picking up again and obviously for all the reasons I just mentioned, I think the prices are actually gonna start going back up and they're already up and maybe even gonna keep going up. But me, as a real estate person and seeing this over the past 12 years, I consider this to be the danger zone. You're basically saying that I hope that the $454,000 I'm gonna pay for that median price single family home is gonna be worth more in 10 years from now. That's the hope. There's never any guarantee, and people thought the same thing back in 2008, and guess what? The houses that they bought back then for those prices are only just now coming back to those prices. That's how long it took to recover, and that's why I give the word of caution. So you can interpret this as you will. Basically, there's two camps here. You can be on the one side that says, well, prices are going to continue to keep going up, I better buy now while I still can. And there's that FOMO, right? The fear of missing out in hopes that maybe it'll be worth even more. Maybe I'll be able to sell it in a couple of years for a huge profit. And then you have the people in the other camp, which is me. I'm more on the skeptical side. Like, wow, you better be careful because prices now are higher than they've ever been. And most real estate investors who have experience in this field will tell you you never wanna buy when prices are this high. So you take it as you will, and my advice is always gonna be the same. Make sure the numbers work on the property regardless of whether you're looking to live in it or whether you're considering renting versus buying or you're considering it as an investment. The numbers just have to make sense. So in case you never saw that video I made before about not buying Miami real estate, I will link it right over here. Go ahead and check it out, and I'll see you guys over there.